Hi, I'm Perrette Godwin. Welcome to SDSU Insider, where we give you an inside look at San Diego's oldest and largest university. Today, we'll introduce you to a few students and faculty that make this world-class institution tick, including SDSU's new president, Dr. Elliot Hirschman. In this new era of leadership comes new challenges. With state funding decreasing every year, we'll show you what's being done to make sure SDSU has the resources it needs to propel the university into the future. Later, we'll sit down with head coach Rocky Long and quarterback Ryan Lindley to talk about how SDSU's football team is building on the momentum of last year's bowl winning season. Plus, we'll show you how football fans and players are coming together to bring back some old game day rituals. But first, while vaccines save lives every day, they can often be ineffective or even dangerous for sick or elderly patients. And there are many diseases for which there are no vaccines. But thanks to a team of dedicated researchers at SDSU's Donald P. Shiley Bioscience Center, that may be about to change. Tucked away in the corner of a research lab, Ed Morgan and a PhD student prepare an experiment. It's a behind the scenes glimpse of scientific discovery that could change the face of preventative medicine. Morgan works with a team of researchers at SDSU to improve the effectiveness of vaccines. Collaborating with the University of Nebraska, they've made advances that could lead to enhanced vaccines to prevent many types of infections, cancers, and other deadly diseases. What we refer to what we're working with is called an immunobiotic. And this is not a classical antibiotic, but what we're trying to do is to use the body's own immune defense system to help itself. We are approaching this in a completely different fashion than classical vaccine development is currently being done. They have tested it against a staph infection that is the leading cause of death for hospital patients. And what they're finding is that they can clear staph infections even with uh, methicillin resistant staph or MRSA, which is a very um, difficult type of bacteria to eradicate because very few antibiotics are effective against it. This is typically the bacteria that's acquired during hospital, you know, prolonged hospitalizations because the bacteria there oftentimes, you know, have acquired antibiotic resistance. So having a new agent that can clear MRSA staph infections is really important. The results have been so successful that the scientists are moving into clinical studies. The implications are very significant. We, do, we don't know exactly how far we can take this. We know that it is important and it gives a new paradigm shift to the way FDA, the way NIH, the way people think about how to develop vaccines. This type of innovation is exactly what led SDSU to build the Bioscience Center in the first place. The vision that the university had for it, which was a center of research focused on the interface between infection, inflammation, and heart disease. The ways that we can tackle these problems in heart disease is through new knowledge creation, another is through public health policies, and the third is through commercialization of discoveries. And this is where I think Ed really has hit his, his um, stride in terms of looking for ways to turn this into a clinically useful product. We're poised at the cusp of a new basic technology that has never been utilized. Coming up, see how San Diego State is planning for the future as it faces damaging economic times and meet the university's new president, Dr. Elliot Hirschman. Welcome back. We've all heard how budget cuts are having devastating effects on colleges and universities throughout California. And while San Diego State is no different, the university isn't letting the cuts derail its efforts to achieve excellence. Building on the momentum of the past decade, SDSU is embarking on its first ever comprehensive fundraising campaign. With more than $250 million in donations already, the university plans to raise a half billion dollars by 2014 for student scholarships, faculty endowments, and more. Right now, let's meet some of the people the campaign will help. 
excellence leadership opportunity. You can see it in our labs and in our classrooms, in our athletic programs, and in the community we proudly serve. To build on this momentum, San Diego State University has launched its first ever university-wide fundraising campaign. The campaign for SDSU will raise $500 million and transform SDSU into a leading national research university. Meet four Aztecs who prove that leadership starts at San Diego State University. In the face of a critical shortage of nurses, donor support enabled SDSU to double the size of its program and improve nurse to patient ratios countywide. Now, dedicated SDSU graduates like Allison Saget are part of the cure. What motivated me to become a nurse is I wanted to give back to the community that I was brought up in. I wanted also to help people in those times where they're the most vulnerable. I wanted to help them to promote a healthy lifestyle. And I also wanted to take care of people. When uh, patients find out that I'm a graduate from the San Diego State School of Nursing, they're pretty much in awe. They know that I made it through a tough program, but in the end, I'm going to be a great nurse. San Diego State has a large role in advancing the nursing care. Our graduates are well educated. They go on to do great things, and they end up being great nurses. Dr. Bill Tong and his colleagues have discovered laser technologies that identify chemicals in extremely small concentrations, allowing earlier detection of AIDS and Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Tong has also patented these lasers to detect improvised explosive devices in the battlefield. My name is Bill Tong. I'm a professor here in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. In my laser research lab, we study, design, and develop ultra-sensitive laser methods with a wide range of potential applications. The Teach Your Scholar model is important because we can teach better when we are also research active. The students get hands-on research experience. We solve problems together, we publish our results together, and we learn from each other every day. The most important part of being a researcher is the opportunity to help solve society's problems. And we are only limited by our own imagination and creativity. It is very encouraging to see how all the support transforms our educational experience. Scholar-athlete Kristen Meyer knows something about perfection. As captain of the SDSU dive team, Kristen Meyer set records in each of her three events and led the team to an undefeated 27-0 season, all while pursuing a challenging economics degree. This student athlete and scholarship recipient personifies excellence. My name is Kristen Meyer. I'm a senior here at San Diego State, and I'm here to finish up school and diving career. I balance athletics and scholarship by trying to be the best that you can be at your sport, as well as trying to be the best uh, student you could be, and trying to put as much time as I do with diving into school even though it gets tough sometimes. The scholarship has allowed me to be able to move out here for school and it's given me the opportunity to be the best diver and athlete that I can be. It's probably one of the best feelings ever to like have all the hard work that you've put in throughout the year and achieve it. And I'm ready for this next year to come up because I'm feeling like I haven't reached the top yet. Young people leaving the foster care system face significant challenges just staying off the streets. SDSU's Guardian Scholars Program transformed the life of Andrea Garrett and other foster children who grew up with little hope to become forces for positive change in the world. My name is Andrea Garrett. I was in the foster care system for 14 years. I was placed in eight different homes. I'm currently a Guardian Scholar studying international security and conflict resolution. Without my Guardian Scholarship, I would be working two, maybe three jobs, definitely not in school and definitely not at San Diego State. I played mom to like my siblings when I was younger, so that's why people are like, you're really mature, and I'm like, it's definitely not by choice. <laughs> if I could be a normal 20-year-old, I may choose that. <laughs> 
was exiting the foster care system at 18 years old. I was handed $500. I was living in my car for six months until I was accepted into the Guardian Scholars Program. They um, set me up with housing. They um, provided a mentor to give me the ability to pave my way on the campus and become a student. And if you provide the opportunity, they'll do what they do, which is be magical, which is be amazing. I really believe that they're investing not only in individuals like myself, they're giving me you know, a reason to live, giving me a reason to give back, and giving me a reason to believe that I can do anything. You can learn more about how to get involved in the campaign for SDSU at www.sdsu.edu slash campaign. And leading these efforts is a new man on campus. Joining me now is the new president of San Diego State University, Dr. Elliot Hirschman. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be with you today. You know, I have to ask you right off the top, what qualities interested you in becoming the next president of San Diego State? One of the most interesting things about San Diego State is the passion people have for the university, the pride that people have in the accomplishments of the university. And just give you something, that an example of something that happened today, it was phenomenal. Uh, I was watching the band play the fight song, and right next to it were some faculty and staff members, and they started singing along with the fight song uh, all the way through. It was really, really inspiring. Uh, and, you know, that pride Plus, of course, the excellence of the programs. There are so many extraordinary programs here. Uh, it's just a top-rated university, and so it's attractive to many, many people in the search. I have to tell you, I actually know that fight song. You know song. the fight song. Good, <laughs> good, excellent. Now that you've had a chance to settle in, what are some of the things that you've actually discovered about the university that maybe you didn't know before coming? Sure. Two, two, two things, and I knew a little bit about each of them, but really as I've experienced the campus on a daily basis, they've come through more. Uh, the first is the rich diversity of the campus. It's just an extraordinary campus, the faculty, staff, and students, and it's wonderful to see the different backgrounds and histories of all of our students, faculty, and staff. The second aspect is how dedicated our faculty and staff are. Uh, it's not a secret that in California and nationally, higher education, particularly public higher education, is facing some challenges. Uh, but faculty and staff, as well as our students, stay focused on our mission, and they're doing wonderful work to lead the university forward. Now, we've just learned about the campaign for SDSU, and how important is that to the future of San Diego State? It's, it's absolutely critical. So one of the issues we're facing now, as there's been a reduction in public support, is how will we meet those needs? And the campaign is a very important part of that. Our overall goal is to raise $500 million to support the university, to support our students, faculty, and staff. The good news is we're already over $250 million, and the even better news will be when we make it to the $500 million mark. All right, that's a good number. <laughs> now, it seems like securing the future of SDSU is also part uh, working with securing and helping the future of San Diego in general. All right. Uh, what I like to say to people is, we impact San Diego at every level in every way. So in our educational programs, we're helping with workforce development, economic development, our research and creative endeavors are addressing challenges, and we have many programs of outreach and partnership with the community from K-12 to industry in the for-profit sector. Okay, now, um what are you looking forward to most about being a new resident of San Diego? We've talked a little bit about the weather. Uh, the, the weather is great. Uh, San Diego is a city that has so many opportunities. On any given day, there are so many possibilities. You can start at the beach, uh, go to a, an athletic event, a Padres game in the afternoon, and then end up at the symphony at night, all with, as you say, uh, a day spent in beautiful weather. <laughs> and since you mentioned the beach, I have to ask, tried surfing or wakeboarding or? Okay, uh, I, I have not tried any of those yet. Uh, I did have an opportunity to visit our Mission Bay Aquatic Center, a fantastic facility in partnership with our colleagues at UCSD. And if the schedule permits, I'd like to try some sailing perhaps or some of the paddle boarding, which looks really fun. And I have no doubt that they'll be willing to help you out with that. Yeah, I think so, yes. <laughs> well, Dr. Hirschman, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Now, coming up on SDSU Insider, there's a football renaissance taking place on Montezuma Mesa. We'll show you how diehard fans and one dedicated former player are helping bring back some old Aztec traditions.
Aztec football enthralled fans with a nine-win season in 2010, culminating in a thrilling 35-14 Poinsettia Bowl victory over Navy. Along the way, the team adopted new game day rituals that coaches say helped the program develop a winning tradition. Everything that we're doing really uh, has energized the football team and I think the student body and the fans as well. One that's near and dear to my heart is our Aztec, our warrior walk. Brian Sipes says the Aztec shield, which is carried by the players leading the walk, is a touchstone reminder of the players' commitment to the team, the university, and the fans. It's a beautiful handcrafted thing. Uh, it's behind our bench at all, the, all of the games uh, on its uh, three-spear stand. It's in the locker room with us. It travels with us on the plane. It's at the hotel the night before. Uh, you'll see that. Uh, that'll show up a lot. Sife says it's critical for game day rituals to inspire teamwork and camaraderie. We swarm when we take the field. In other words, we don't run out in a line. We, we stay tight. And now that's a return of an old tradition. It's, a, it's a, something that the Aztec Warriors did. It, uh, it promotes or, or signifies our solidarity, uh, our togetherness as a team. The spear spike at midfield has returned with a nostalgic twist. This has always been a tradition for Aztec games. It, it got away from us for a long time. What's new about it is rather than have our Aztec warrior mascot plant the spear, we have an honor warrior, a player from the past, somebody that we revere. Uh, that we invite to come out and, and have the privilege of doing that. The fans get very excited about that. After games, players gather near the student section, close to the fans, and sing the fight song. It's really caught on, been a great thing. It's not just for the student body, but the, the San Diego fans in general find their way down to that section and, and celebrate with us afterwards. Uh, it's helped us to bring back a sense of, of team and commitment and identity for our football team. But I think also what's caught on is I think the fans are really into it now. It's rolling downhill now. We couldn't stop it if we wanted to, and the fans only add more and more to it as we go. With all these traditions, there's going to be a lot of fun at Qualcomm Stadium this season. But let's talk about what's going to happen on the field. Head coach Rocky Long will be leading the team from the sidelines and Ryan Lindley, the leader on the field. They're both with us now. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. You know, there's a lot of expectations about what's going to happen this season. How, coach, did the team prepare? Well, they, they work all year long. Uh, when they got back from last year, last season when they won a bowl game, they started into off-season workouts in January. We had spring practice in March. Uh, they worked all summer long, and then we, now we're in two days. Okay. You know, one of the things that we just finished talking about was traditions brought back by Brian Sipe and how important those are for the fans. But what does that mean for the team, these traditions that we have? Well, I think the team loves them, and, and I think they enjoy being part of a tradition that's going to continue on for many years. And like you say, Coach Seib brought some of those back, and I'm, I'm sure the team is right into them. All right, Ryan, would you agree with that? What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think it's something that it's, uh, you're playing for more than yourself. You're playing for the, for the past Aztecs, the future Aztecs, and everybody that's here right now. And it's more than just this team. It's this athletic center and this, uh, this school and this city. There's been some talk about the Ryan Lindley and Ronnie Hillman quarterback running back uh, duo and that there could be the best in college football this season. How important is the consistency that these two gentlemen are bringing back to the team? Well, Ryan's the leader of our football team and he's got great athletic ability. He's a very talented quarterback, uh, but I think more than that, it's the leadership that he brings with him. Ronnie Hillman's uh, one of the better running backs in the country and it's up to the, us to get him some holes so that he can show us stuff. <laughs> well, we want to see those holes, that's for sure. Now, who are some of the other players that fans like myself should be looking for? Well, I, you know, I hate to point out just one guy or two, but uh, our tight end position is stocked. We have four or five tight ends in our program that could start for anybody, and, and hopefully we're going to use them that way this year. We've got a couple of linebackers that are all-conference performers. We have a defensive back that's an all-conference performer. We have a great punter and a good kicker. So we got some really good players in certain positions. And, you, and you're shaking your head in agreement, too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think those are, those are some of our strengths. And, and I'm excited to see the younger guys. I mean, that's, that's kind of all the stuff we know and guys that performed last year. But there's going to be a lot of guys coming off redshirt seasons and guys that are going to be able to step up in, in positions where other guys left that they'll be able to kind of, they'll be hungry for it. They'll be able to play hard and, uh, and fight on. You know, I think that fans are going to have expectations, especially those who are ticket holders and who have been hanging on for a long time. What can they expect to see at a game this season? 
Well, I think the only thing we can promise is that our players will play hard and, and play tough for the whole game. Uh, but any, play, any player has a higher expectation. Every coach has a higher expectation than any of the fans do. So if we don't meet our own expectations, we're going to be more disappointed than they will. All right. Well, thanks for that. Now, I have to ask you, Ryan, what it, was it like being part of a bowl winning season last year? Oh, it was something special. I think, I think we knew that we took some steps in the right direction as a program, and that's what we wanted to do. And each year, we want to send our, send our seniors out right, and, and I think we, we attained some of the goals we had, but, but our main goal is winning a conference championship, and that's what we're gunning for this year, and, and we know we're going to settle for nothing less. I think everything else comes with, uh, with that, and if we accomplish that goal, we'll, uh, we'll make everything else happen. And would you mirror what he's just said? Yeah, he usually says it better than I do anyway. So, yeah, yeah I agree with him. All right, and how do you stay motivated? Because, um, as Coach just said, it's not like you ever have any time off. How do you stay motivated throughout the entire season? You know, I think it's it's uh, it's on a couple different levels. There's an individual level where, as a player, you want to be a competitor. You want to be better than you were the day before. And that's kind of a, also a team thing. You want to be contributing. You want to be helping out the team, getting better. It's, whether it's, uh, you know, Leon McFadden getting better as a cornerback to help out the defense or, or uh, Emilio Rivera being a better guard to, to help out our offensive line and our offensive unit. It's... Um, it's just you want to improve every day. And I think if, if you're a competitor and that's the kind of people we want as Aztecs, then uh, we'll be a better team for it. All right, gentlemen. Well, I want to thank you both so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure, and we look forward to a great Aztec season. Thank you. Thank you. Nearly 6,000 new students joined the Aztec ranks this fall, including more than 3,900 new freshmen, boasting an average GPA of 3.63. Pretty smart bunch. While they attend classes, construction crews are hard at work on the new Aztec Student Union. The old Aztec Center has been cleared away to make room for the new building that, when completed, will be the greenest building on campus. So scheduled to open in the fall of 2013, our Aztec Student Union is going to be a 200,000 square foot multi-level gathering place for students, basically the, the home base of campus. So the old Aztec Center was built in 1968 and it was designed to meet the needs of the 10,000 students that we had here at San Diego State, but with 30,000 students and growing population, we wanted to create a student union that better served the needs and demands of the students that we have. So. This is a great example of students stating that they wanted a new student union, voting for it, and seeing it becoming reality today. The new sustainable features include green roofing, water collection tanks, and solar power, and around 80% of the old Aztec Center will be reused and repurposed in the construction of the new student union. Finally, maybe you were one of the hundreds of Aztec faithful who filled the campus earlier this year for a chance to be in a new commercial for SDSU. We went behind the scenes to see how it all came together. Once you're an Aztec, you're always an Aztec. That was the concept for the highly successful Aztec for Life commercial that tracked the Aztec warrior from grade school to grandfatherhood. The spot earned rave reviews and the creative team is back to produce a bigger and better commercial for SDSU. We were definitely breaking away from that norm of just, you know, the typical institutional spot where you showcase, you know, your research and your students and, and all of those different, you know, beauty shots on campus. We want to do something that's different, unique, that stands out. This commercial, we're really trying to showcase that SDSU is truly San Diego's university. We have 250,000 alumni and more than half reside in San Diego. So really, when you go about your everyday life, you encounter so many people throughout the day who are an Aztec, whether they're an, an alum themselves or they know somebody, they're parents so really it's that's what we're showcasing here that throughout the day you know you meet so many people who have um, SDSU they've been impacted by the university. The concept for this spot was um, inspired by the I believe that we will win chant that everyone knows from San Diego State's Sweet 16 performance in basketball last year so we really are using that um, 
I believe we will win as a metaphor for San Diego State's momentum and leadership across all, all areas. You know, to bring the spot to life, we have literally been all over the county. And so we shot uh, everything starting from like a four-year-old Japanese girl who sang I to the mayor of San Diego yesterday on a rooftop overlooking the downtown. As you can see right behind me at Hepner Hall here, we're getting, we're in the last stages of preparation for a shot that we'll have. We're estimating somewhere between 500 and 1,000 people. So uh, we're going to incorporate students and faculty and alumni and members of the community. Uh, this entire square behind me will be filled with people chanting, I believe that we will win. I'm super excited. It's a whole lot of fun. Uh, I missed the shoot last year, but I'm stoked to be in it this year. Everybody uh, kind of said, Rex, you're doing it. Um, but yeah, I stepped up and I'm doing what I can. Kind of losing my voice a little bit, but... I'll be all right. Well, when people are watching the finish spot, I really want them to feel pride in everything that uh, that San Diego State's been doing. The reputation and the the focus and the intensity of this university has changed so much in the 10 years that I've been in this town. I'm really proud to be a part of San Diego State in the sense that we're helping them tell their story, and because I think there's a lot of great stories here. That's all for this episode of SDSU Insider. For SDSU News Every Day, visit our website at newscenter.sdsu.edu and join the conversation on our Facebook page and Twitter. Thanks again for joining us and go Aztecs!